All right, if we could get started, please. I'll go check and see if any public sign. Okay. Welcome to the Sh Coastal Shark Management Board meeting. I'm Roy Miller from Delaware. I'm the governor's appointee. I'm chairing the Coastal Shark Board. Um, I'd like to call the meeting to order. First item of business on our agenda is approval of the agenda. Are there any additions or corrections to the agenda for this meeting? Seeing none, I'll assume they're approved as prepared. Also, uh, approval of the proceedings from the August 2018 Shark Board meeting. Are, are there any comments, suggestions, additions, or corrections to those proceedings? Seeing none, I'll assume they're approved as they have been prepared for you. Um, at this time, I'll offer the opportunity for public comment on any, for any items that are not on our agenda. Is there any public comment, Kirby? No. Nope. Seeing none, um, we'll proceed on with our agenda. The next item on our agenda is consideration of Addendum 5 for final approval. This is a final action today, hopefully. Uh, I'm going to call on Kirby Roots Murdy of the Commission. I've also got before us up here Greg Garman representing law enforcement. And um, uh, Carol's not here. Carol's sitting over there. Oh, Carol's over at the end of the table. I missed you, Carol. Welcome. Carol um, uh, Brewster Geis is, is with us representing NOAA Fisheries. And so I will call on Kirby Roots Murdy to discuss the options and the public comments summary on Addendum 5. Kirby? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'll try to go through this as quickly as possible. Uh, this is our outline. I'm going to go briefly through the timetable an overview, statement of the problem, background, the management op options, and then I'll take, uh, I'll go through at least the advisory panel comments. We didn't receive any public comment, and then I'll take any questions you guys have. So as you guys are aware, this board initiated draft addendum five back in May of this year. Uh, the board considered the document for public comment in August of this year. And we had a public comment period that started at the end of August and ran through the beginning of October. Uh, today, as Roy mentioned, we'll be taking final, or the board will be considering final action on this draft addendum. So back in May, uh, the board was presented the recent North Atlantic short fin MAKO stock assessment and the emergency rule measures that were implemented by NOAA Highly Migratory Species Division in response to it. The Atlantic short fin MAKO stock assessment indicated that the resource was overfished and that overfishing was uh, occurring. Uh, to address the, the stock status, uh, the International Commission on the Conservation of Atlantic Tunas, ICAT, at their November 2017 meeting determined that all member countries needed to reduce landings by approximately 72 to 79 percent from current levels to prevent further declines in the population. And a reduction to zero landings uh, is needed to rebuild the resource by 2040. So to address the needed landings reduction, NOAA Fisheries implemented the following measures for short fin makos. They increased the minimum size limit, uh, fork length for the recreational fishery from 54 inches to 83 inches, and prohibited landings in the commercial fishery for all gear types with the exception of the pelagic longline fleet for those pelagic longline vessels that have an HMS permit. Electronic monitoring devices are required in order to retain sharks that are dead at haulback. 
So uh, the board considered these measures and the technical committee's report and decided not to adopt emergency rule measures, but instead initiate an addendum to provide flexibility in implementing measures uh, and changes to those measures for all species within the Coastal Sharks FMP. So part of the issue here is that the FMP currently only allows the commercial quotas, possession limits, and season dates to be adjusted annually through specifications. All other commercial and recreational measures can be adjusted only through an addendum as outlined in the adaptive management section or through emergency action. So the emergency action uh, has a rigorous set of criteria and basically when looking at the stock assessment for short fin makos, it didn't meet that criteria in state waters. So the board, as I noted, decided to initiate an addendum that would allow them more flexibility in trying to make changes to the FMP for a number of measures uh, in situations that basically fall short of an emergency action. So, uh, as you all are aware, the FMP was adopted in 2008. Uh, we have eight different uh, complexes that is under this FMP, a prohibited species, research, small coastal, non-sandbar, large coastal, pelagic, smooth dogfish. And it's important to understand that the, the proposed action, uh, the two options in this addendum would apply to all of those uh, species complexes and management groups. So in terms of the options, we may always include a status quo. As you will know, option one, this would mean no changes to the current setup. So annually, we would continue to only make changes to the commercial quota possession limit and season dates. Um, and again, an addendum or emergency action would be needed to adjust any of the other measures outlined in the FMP uh, for both the commercial and recreational fishery. Option two would allow the board to adjust all needed measures through annual specifications. So basically we would, in addition to the commercial quota possession limit and season length, the board could adjust recreational size limits, possession limits, season lengths, uh, area closures for both the rec and commercial fishery, gear specifications for both uh, fisheries, as well as effort controls. And under this option, the way it would work is that any of those changes that the board wished to make would happen once a year through specifications. Uh, these changes can be made through a motion and it would not require a public hearing or public comment. So it would be at the board's discretion how and when to take public comment on any of those changes. They could be submitted before a board meeting. They could be taken at the board meeting that, that these are being considered at. Um, and again, for this option and for option three, it doesn't preclude the board if they wanted to in the future to initiate an addendum to make other changes. Option three would allow this board to adjust measures on an ad hoc basis. So the same list uh, that was included in option two would be uh, allowed to be altered annually um, at any point in the year. Uh, so it wouldn't line up with the annual meeting. It could happen basically as new information became available. If we had a new stock assessment and no fisheries came out with a finding that required changes to their measures, uh, uh, this board could adjust those measures um, on an ad hoc basis as needed. Uh, so again, uh, these changes could be made through a motion and it would not require a public hearing uh, or public comment. It would be at the discretion of the board how to receive and consider those. In terms of the public comment period, as I mentioned, we had no public comment that were submitted. We held a public hearing webinar in September. We had five attendees. Of those five, none offered any public comment. Uh, we also held a advisory panel meeting in October. We had three attendees for that, and two of them indicated their preference for option three uh, to be able to adjust measures on an ad hoc basis. And the feedback they offered was basically that this seemed to give the board the most flexibility, the, the, the greatest leeway when needed to adjust measures to respond to changes in the status of the resources. So with that, I will take any questions from the board. Thanks. Questions or comments for Kirby? 
Lewis. Lewis Gillingham. Thank you, Chairman Miller. I'm just wondering, Kirby, was the tech uh, advisory board advised uh, regarding the state's ab ability to implement a change? timetable. I mean, I, uh, I was talking to Chris Bat Savage from North Carolina. They've got proclamation authority. Virginia is able to do it in about a six, 60 day period going through a normal cycle. But I think we know from other events that some states require the meeting of their leg legislature in order to do this. So, and, and I believe it was for sharks, there was a survey circulated, well, how fast can the states implement this? And uh, anyhow, that's, that's my co comment. And were they aware of it? Because it seemed like the, the three people were in, in favor of option three for that reason. It, it seems like it would give this board the most flexibility, but I'm not sure that it really does. Kirby? Thank you, Lewis. Uh, yes, so that's a, that's a good point to bring up. Uh, we did not, on the AP call, get into the specifics of each of the state's um, regulatory process in terms of how they can change their measures. As you point out, each state is a bit different. Um, so uh, that is definitely a consideration for the board. And if they were to choose, if you all were to choose, say, option three, how that may possibly impact certain states versus others in terms of um, making those changes to certain measures. The next hand I saw was Mike Luisi. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm certainly supportive of the flexibility that's offered in Addendum 5 uh, in this case. But my question, I guess, is to you, Kirby. Uh, in planning for an upcoming year, you know, we do a lot of specifications you know, with with the council and with ASMFC, and typically they are on an annual cycle where you know that in a given month during a given meeting, you're going to be taking up the question as to specifications for a future year. Uh, option three offers the flexibility even outside of that where you could at any time throughout the year take up um, the question of specifications. And my question, I guess, to you as staff, Kirby, what would be better for you as far as planning? Would it be better to know that every time we have a fall or an annual meeting, we're going to be doing specifications for coastal sharks. That way we know it's all there, it's all before us. We can have a date fixed in our mind when we have those rules in place. Or would it be better for staff having that ad hoc ability? And it really boils down to what, what makes more sense as, a, as far as, as a planning process um, for you and, and the folks at the commission. Kirby. So thanks for the question, Mike. Um, from a staff standpoint, we, I don't really see this addendum as uh, posing challenges for planning per se. It's really more of an administrative uh, process change for this board. So uh, it, it gets to how quickly really does the board want to be able to uh, change measures in response to new information and uh, changes to the status of the resource. So you know, I brought up the short fin mako assessment as, as kind of this case example of how we, we kind of came to the point of this addendum being initiated and you all considering it today. Uh, we had an assessment completed basically late fall last year. NOAA came out with what their emergency rule measures were going to be. And so in those situations, you could have the board kind of respond very quickly to, to say we're going to make a decision on accepting those measures rather than having to each time uh, initiate it addendum. Um, the alternative is if you if you think that there's better, if it's better to organize all this around one time annually to really consider changes across a number of commercial and recreational specifications, you know, there's, there's obviously benefits to that. So. Robert Boyles. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Lewis, to your point, and I appreciate you bringing up the question. Many times um, I have sat at this board or at another species board asking for patience and forbearance because we do have to um, regulate via um, our General Assembly. Um, however, in the case of sharks, it is the law of the state of South Carolina that we adopt by reference um, federal regulatory measures. And so when the feds change um, those measures, um, we adopt immediately. So we, in this unusual case with sharks, uh, don't have to um, work through our legislative process. So we're able to implement these measures um, pretty quickly. And so as a result, I like the, uh, the ad hoc approach as well. Thank you. Any further comments or questions? John Clark? Uh, no, Mr. Chair. I was just going to ask if you're ready for a motion. Hold that thought for just a second, John. Any further comments or questions before I give the floor to John Clark? Go ahead, John. Don't mean to be rushing the issue, Roy, but it is lunchtime. <laughs> <laughs> uh, move to adopt draft addendum five with management option three as the chosen management option. Take us a second to get it up on the board. Motion reads, move to approve addendum five for coastal sharks with management option three as the chosen management option. Motion by John Clark. Is there a second to the motion? First hand, Justin Davis. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, are we ready for a vote? All right. Um, is there a need for a caucus? Tony? Roy, to simplify things, since there's only one management option in this document, um, it would be the intention of this document to be implemented um, immediately, since there's not um, anything that the states would need to follow up on. If I am correct and if I'm wrong, then please let us know. But then um, we could count this as the final approval of the document, and would, this would be the final vote, the only vote that we'll need to approve the document since I don't believe we'll need an implementation date because it would just be immediate. Everyone understand that because some states have the uh, authority to implement it immediately and others don't since there's no um, um, implementation criteria for this one. It, it can be done expeditiously. So if everyone understands that and there's no further comments, um, is there any objection to this motion? Uh, seeing none, um, uh, are there, well, I'll ask, are there any nulls, any null votes, any abstentions? Seeing none, then the um, motion passes unanimously by uh, lack of objection, and um, it, it goes into effect immediately, I guess. Thank you for that. And um, 
I guess we'll move on to agenda item five, which is um, 2019 Coastal Shark specifications. And again, I'll call on uh, Kirby Roots Murdy. Kirby? Thank you, Mr. Chair. This will be a short presentation. So uh, we have the 2019 commercial specifications for your consideration. They were published in a proposed rule back on September 11th, uh, FR notice 45866. We included it in the briefing materials. Uh, the big takeaway is that the quotas are effectively status quo from 2018, so there's no changes in the quotas. Um, the proposed open date for all the shark management groups is January 1, 2019, um, and it's also uh, status quo on the retention limit. So what that means is it's going to start out at 25 uh, large coastal sharks uh, other than sandbars per vessel per trip, and they can be adjusted as needed, as we've done in the past few years. So the way that that works is that at some point in the summer, usually around July, uh, depending on how it's, the landings are tracking with the quota, uh, those that possession limit can be adjusted and sometimes it gets adjusted down and then back up. So. Uh, these, just for your, uh, for your able to, to see, um, these are what the quotas, uh, again, were in 2018, what we're working under right now, and what will be carried forward for 2019. Um, so we have them broken out for the Atlantic by large coastal sharks, hammerheads, non-blacknose uh, small coastal sharks, blacknose sharks uh, south of 45 uh, degrees north latitude, smooth hound uh, sharks, and and then for the next slide, we have all the uh, non-regional quotas. So non-sandbar, large coastal shark research, sandbar uh, research, blue sharks, uh, poor beagles, and pelagic sharks other than poor beagles or blue sharks. So uh, in terms of next steps, uh, what this board often does is we wait until the final rule is published later in the fall. And so the board, traditionally what happens is the board will approve specifications by email vote once the final rule is published. Uh, that being said, many years we have a, a motion to accept that that's how the board will move forward in approving this, these specifications uh, following the board meeting effectively. So with that, I'll take any questions and thanks. Any questions? <clears throat> Seeing none, I guess we can request any other agenda items. We need a motion. Ah, sorry. We'll need a motion uh, to approve this, the specifications that Kirby just presented. Would anyone care to make that motion? Yes. Chris Bat Savage. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I uh, move to approve the 2019 Coastal Shark specifications via an email vote after NOAA Fisheries publishes the final rule for the 2019 Atlantic Shark commercial fishing season. Thank you, Chris. The motion is on the board. Move to approve the 2019 Coastal Shark specifications via an email vote after NOAA Fisheries publishes the final rule for the 2019 Atlantic Shark commercial fishing season. Motion by Mr. Bat Savage, second by John Clark. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, is there any objection to the motion? Seeing none, I'll assume the motion is approved as read. Thank you. Um, on to other business. Is there any other business before the short board? Seeing none, are we ready for adjournment? Uh, if, if if there's no objection, then we'll declare this board meeting adjourned. Thank you very much. Thank you. We will um, break for lunch, and then we will start the Spiny Dogfish Management Board at 1.30. Yeah, or do you want a little extra time? All right. Try to be back promptly. We don't have everybody here. Uh, Robert. Tony, um, those, several of us will not be here for the afternoon meetings. Is there, are there stage directions for the annual dinner tonight? Yes. Um, the buses.